Hey guys, so I wanted to give you a quick run through of how I honeybook and I just want to preamble this by saying that I have tried so many different client management systems and I actually hesitated to use honeybook for about a year and a half. Um, I actually got an account back in probably 2015 and they just weren't where I wanted them to be yet. So being totally open and honest about that, but they have made leaps and bounds and so many changes and they just listen to their clients like there's no tomorrow and they make changes so quickly to the product and are constantly making it better. So recently, about two months ago now, I switched over my entire business to HoneyBook because the other softwares I was using were just not cutting it and I actually was using three different softwares to do what I needed to do and now I have moved all of them into HoneyBook and canceled my subscriptions for all of them. So today I just wanted to show you how I HoneyBook in case you are curious about the product and if you are in the market for a client management system, I honestly cannot recommend HoneyBook any higher as a company, as a software, as people. They are just such an incredible community. So anyway, before I geek out too long, um, I will get started on this tutorial. So this is my pipeline. So this is where I can at a glance see all of my projects. So essentially this is like my homepage. So right here I can sort by project date. I can sort by the stage. So we're going to sort by project date so we can see the last one. Um, these are kind of just like test projects. Um, but the last one furthest booked out is October 7th and then in 2018 and then it goes all the way down. So if you want to go by recent projects, you can just switch it. So this was the last wedding that I had going through there, Sarah and Josh. And this is where you can see the stage of the project. So HoneyBook automatically um, moves things through the stages. So if they are in inquiry, then they will be showing up here. If you have sent them an email saying, hey, I got your inquiry, let's set up a time to chat, it'll automatically send them into follow up. And then you'll manually have to put them into this meeting spot if you have a meeting scheduled with them over Skype or in person. And then once you send a proposal, which we will get to in a second, they'll be moved into here. Once it's signed, they go to here. Once their retainer is paid, they move to here. And then after that, they will move into planning. And then once you're totally done with them, the album is done if you're a wedding photographer. Um, but this is for all creatives. So if you are watching this video and you are a creative entrepreneur or small business owner, this will totally work for you. Um, but once your project is completed, you can just go down here, hit completed or hit archive. Um, so this is just kind of the general overview. And if you only want to see which ones need follow up. These are all the pending inquiries um, that I'm trying to schedule meetings for. Again, these two are just tests, but um, you can see what proposals are sent, um, who's paid, well, everybody paid, so now they're into planning. And so these are all the current projects I'm working on. So then you have all of these tools. So I'm actually going to show you the workflow tool. And in here, you will see all my workflow templates. So I have a wedding workflow, an engagement session workflow with a wedding. So if I am also shooting their wedding and I'm shooting their engagement session, I wanted to set them up as two separate projects since they are obviously happening on two different days and they have two different workflows. So I have an engagement session with a wedding and without a wedding, a brand photography workflow and a fire pit session, which are my mentoring sessions. So if I click on wedding workflow, this is just the template. So I apply this to every wedding client once they book or actually once they inquire. So step one, call inquiry, send email. So you'll actually see here, this is the like really awesome part, is you can set what day it happens. So this one is zero days after activating workflow. So this workflow automatically attaches to a wedding inquiry when the contact form comes in through my website. So this will automatically show up in my task list, which we'll get to in a couple minutes, but you can say zero days, you can say two days after activating the workflow, you can choose the previous step as a trigger. So after I followed up with them, three days after that, I wanna have the consultation with the bride and groom, send a thank you for speaking email, and then I'm going to send the brochure, the proposal. So these will all trigger and you can set these triggers. So like I can go in and adjust the number of days and adjust the trigger. So these are the four triggers after activating, before project, after project, or after previous step is complete. So I don't wanna make changes to this because it's all perfect, but um, you'll also see there are four options to creating a task. So it can just be a task that you check off the list and you have to do it in another program like scheduling social media. You're not doing that through HoneyBook. So you would go to Facebook or Planoly, co-schedule, whatever you're using and do that. So that's just a, a check box. Um, if it's an email, I put all of my email templates in HoneyBook and I'll show you that in a second, but the step can be send email. And if you'll see, it actually says send email with this message. So this is the email template that I'm sending and I can choose to approve before sending or send automatically. I want to approve all the emails before sending just in case there's one thing in the email template that doesn't pertain to the client. Um, I just 
kind of get weirded out about totally automating everything. So I approve everything before I send it. And that way I can also add some personal touches to the email. So then you'll see I have lots of those. So send email is a big one. And then send brochure is another one. So I created a HoneyBook brochure that has all my pricing. And I'll show you that in a few minutes as well. But you choose which brochure template you want to send, when to send it, and what email to send with that message. And then really the last one that would be a workflow task is send questionnaire. So I have a couple different questionnaires that I send throughout a wedding project. One is a relationship questionnaire, a wedding day questionnaire, a vendor questionnaire, and an engagement session questionnaire. So I created all the questionnaires in HoneyBook, and then I am able to just choose which questionnaire I want to send and what email I want to send with it, when I'm sending it, and all that. So super, super easy. And it did take a little bit of time to set up, but now I have this applied to all 30 of those projects that you saw in the beginning. So I just honestly can't imagine how many things would slip through the cracks if I did not have a workflow. And that really, really affects client experience. So having this makes it absolutely certain that I'm not missing anything in the workflow for every client. I'm getting them the emails they need to have a great experience. I'm sending thank you emails. I'm sending educational emails about prepping for your engagement session or prepping for your wedding day. So I'm sending them links to blog posts and all that that I think will be helpful throughout the workflow. And that's all built into this. So some of the emails might have links to blog posts I've written with educational content, but essentially it's all going to create a task list dynamically and like automatically based on their project date and the day that you created the workflow. So you'll see my workflow is 142 steps, I believe. Yeah, so it goes all the way up to wishing them a happy anniversary one year after their project date but I have all of my emails in here, all my tasks. So this goes from inquiry all the way to anniversary. So that includes editing, calling, all of that stuff. So all of the post-production things are mostly just tasks. And then there's a couple emails. I think I have like 16 or 17 email templates in here, which are actually available in my shop. If you go to lauraleecreative.com slash shop. Um, but I have seven, 16 or 17 email templates that I send after the wedding about ordering albums and sending emails to vendors and all of that. So um, 142 steps, it's a lot, but I honestly only have to do a couple minutes per day for admin work and tasks for my wedding photography clients because everything is in the system. So, um, we are going to save, um, even though I didn't actually make any changes, but just in case. And then we are going to exit the workflow and I'm going to show you how it works in the task management section of HoneyBook. Okay, so now we are going to go to tasks. So if you click here, you'll see all of the tasks that I have to do today. So a couple of these have old due dates because I had moved them over from all of my other systems and because of the way my workflow is set up due to project dates and stuff, the due date had already been in the past. So a couple of these are overdue, but normally you will go and you'll only see a couple tasks. So really I should only have like eight tasks today if I didn't have all these overdue tasks, but um, they're really quick to do, so it won't take long. But anyway, you will see the task. So this is what you had named it in your workflow, what the due date is, whose project is for, and what workflow it is. So even if you have engagement clients, brand clients, if you do product photography, if you're an event planner, any type of small business owner, if you have a workflow, and you have it set up correctly with all your email templates, this is where all of your tasks are going to be. So it's really cool because if I have an email to send, so like for this one example, I have to send them a wedding day timeline. So I would go to their project so that I can approve the email and I would hit view edit on this email and my email template pops up. So I would just copy and paste the link to their wedding day timeline, which I do in Google Docs, and then I hit approve and send. So we're not going to send it, um, but I'm gonna go back and go back to tasks. And essentially you will be able to manage hundreds of clients really if you wanted to by doing this and it'll automatically give your, your task list for each client every single day. You can see what your overdue tasks are, what needs approval. And what I did last week before I was going on vacation, I clicked on my entire week's worth of tasks and I went through and did all the ones early that I was able to. If it was an email that I had to send or a questionnaire or something, I did them all before I left for vacation so that I didn't have to do them while I was away. So this is really, 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 really insanely awesome because for every single client, you can see what's due on any given day, when payments are going to come in and all that, that's actually on a on a calendar automatically created by HoneyBook. Um, so it's just really awesome because you are ensuring that nothing is falling through the cracks with any client. So, and 
you do things so much faster having workflow. So honestly, I have been on vacation now for 17 days as of the making of this video, and I only worked about 12 hours. So 10 minutes was spent doing admin work in HoneyBook because I am able to do things so quickly and send emails super quickly, send questionnaires super quickly. And I'll actually show you really quick how easy it is. So I'm going to send this questionnaire to Brittany and Matt. So I'm going to go to their project. And today's task is to approve the vendor questionnaire. So we're just going to go to view edit. And since the questionnaire is already built into my account, I already have the email template built in. The subject is already there. It's already going to Brittany and Matt. And I am just going to skim it make sure it is all set. And then I'm going to hit approve and send, and it is going to send to my clients. And that is how easy it is. And now it says I'm free for today. So I don't have any more tasks to do for Brittany and Matt. So it's awesome. And you can see that email popped up here. So I can see all of the correspondence that I've had with these clients from the get go. So I've actually had a lot more correspondence with them, but they were moved over from another project management tool. So all of the past correspondence isn't in there, but Anyway, so that's how the task list works. There's also a phone app, which is really, really awesome. I'm not sure if it works on Android. This is iOS, so I'm guessing right now it might just be iPhone. But um, they also have a contact form that you can embed right in your website. And I personally think it looks really nice. And you can set the style, you can set the font type, the colors, and all that stuff. And you can create your own questions. So that is the contact form. And then you just get this embed code, put it on your website, and it is really awesome. And I can actually show you how that works on my site. Oh, that's not it. Okay. And this is the contact form. It never loads. So here we go. So it has my logo. It has my business name. So this just links back to my website. And then if my internet wasn't so slow, there we go. It would load all of the questions and then I hit send. And then it comes right into that pipeline in the beginning and it would come into this inquiry spot. So that's the contact form. The library is where you can upload all of your images. So what's really cool, which we'll go over in a second, is you can put images as the headers on all of the documents you send. So if you send an invoice to a client after a wedding, like say they added an extra hour or something, you can go in and actually put one of their wedding images on the header of their invoice. So it's super personal, it's really awesome. You can just do generic, images, but I have a couple brand images in here, engagement images, wedding images. So I have a bunch of different ones and I just use them on all of my different files that I send. So that is the library. And then under templates, this is where I have all of my emails, all my brochures, my questionnaires, all my contract templates, the packages I offer. So if I click on email, this is where I add all of my templates. So I have, let's see, I think I have 119 email templates. Definitely was not uh, quick to write all of those, but it's been happening over the last five years. So wasn't like I sat down and wrote 119 emails, but you'll see here, it's going to auto-populate their first name. And all I have to do is go to the workflow. This will automatically automatically pop up when I need to send it. And then I just need to adjust all the highlighted parts. So that's just like adding in somebody's name. And so I have all of my emails categorized here. So these are all wedding ones. Then I have vendor ones. So if I'm sending the blog to a vendor or introducing myself, testimonial requests, these are all my mentoring ones questionnaires, inquiries, engagement sessions, brand sessions. So those are all my email templates. There's a ton. Um, but then under here, you can see everything is built into a brochure. So this is the wedding investment guide for Lorelei Photography. And so this is what I send to a client after they verbally or written confirm that they're going to book their wedding. So I send them this brochure and they can just pick their package. So on the client facing side of things, it'll have a little check checkbox for them and they'll be able to check which collection they want so that I don't have to be like, hey, which collection do you want? Do you want the most expensive one, least expensive? So I can just send them this. They can view everything that is in that collection. And then they can also add on a la carte items if they want to do that. So that's my wedding one. I have an engagement one as well as a brand one. Um, I won't show you all of them. Um, but so those are the brochures and those are automatically built into my workflow as well, the correct ones with the email templates that correspond with them. So those are the brochures, the questionnaires, just generic, um, but these are all my wedding day questionnaires built in. So it's really, really great because everything is all in one place. So every client has all of their email correspondence between me and them in one place. All their questionnaires are in one place, their brochures, their contracts, their packages, everything is all in one place. So it's really, really awesome. And these are just all of my contract templates and this little check mark means it's the default. Um, so those are all of my templates. And then 
under bookkeeping. I don't really use this, so I'm not going to go over it. I use QuickBooks for bookkeeping, and this actually does integrate with QuickBooks, but you can just see here like what payments are coming in, and you can go to your profit and loss report and stuff like that. So I don't want to go through all of that, but if you go to calendar, you can see booked projects. So they will be in blue. Payments will be in gray. So it just says like payment to a four, 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 et cetera. So you can see when you're getting paid. So if you're trying to book a vacation or something like that, you can really at a glance see when payments are coming in. Um, and then you'll see tentative projects are in this color, booked projects are in that color. So um, that is the calendar. And if you have meetings, um, they'll show up in yellow. So that's the calendar. And then the last thing is just really, I'm gonna show you how it works when you're in an actual project. So I'm gonna just go to my sample project, which is me. And if I wanted to send a file, I would create a brochure, I can create a proposal, a questionnaire, an invoice. So again, I have all this built into my workflow, so I'm generally not manually doing these things. Um, you can also create a timeline or an agreement, but just for the sake of this tutorial video, I will show you how to do that. So generally, I like to do a proposal because this is an all-in-one, so they get the proposal, the invoice, and the contract. So we're going to click on proposal, and I'm going to say we're going to use Kim's project proposal as like the base. Um, you can also start with a blank proposal. But you'll see in a second, this is all going to automatically populate. So the proposal here is for Wedding Collection 2, and this shows the client everything they're getting in Wedding Collection 2. And then it'll automatically apply the tax and the total for them. They'll automatically create a payment schedule, but then you can go in and adjust that payment schedule if you want them to pay on different days. You can say today on the project date, custom date, um, and then the agreement. So it's automatically going to pull up my agreement template for a wedding contract and it would populate the bride's name. And then you just have to populate the groom's name and the locations and all of that. Um, and then all of these are just for the client's initials. It'll have the payment schedule on here for them, which I think is really awesome. And then this is where you sign. This is where the client would sign. If you need to add a signature, you would just click that and it would add the second person in the project. So that's how you send a proposal. And we can also send questionnaires, you can send brochures. So you can just pick your brochure template, pick the wedding template, and then it would change. You can see now it auto-populated the brochure. And then it would ask you to review the email and it automatically populates the email template that I have. So this would just send, you would hit send and it would go to your client. And then the same thing with questionnaires and contracts. So you would just the questionnaire, invoice, agreement, if you want to send them a contract. And then you would be able to see all the payments that they've made. This is just a big project, so those aren't actually real. Um, and if I had any correspondence with them, that would all be under activity. So if I want to send them an email, I can go in here and just write an email. Or, and then make the subject line, and it's actually linked to Gmail, so you will be able to see it in your Gmail, you can respond from Gmail or HoneyBook, and it all will go into the same place, which is really, really awesome. You can attach files, insert links, send vendor recommendations, which is really cool, or you can just pick from your email templates, and that's why I was really nitpicky about naming them wedding, brand, engagement, and everything, so that I could easily go down to the ones labeled wedding and pick the correct one, um, but all of my emails are built into my workflow, so I'm usually not sending them templates from this section. I'm usually just responding to emails that they have and stuff like that. And then again, I can change the status of the project to any of these and it'll move in my pipeline. So that is how I HoneyBook. And I know that was kind of a long video, but hopefully this helps you see the power of having a client management system. And it has honestly just changed my life, changed my business. I just feel like I can take on the world now. And I absolutely love them as a company. As people, I've met them, I've been to their office, I've met the CEO and the COO and the founder and all of that. And they're just really, really incredible people that really want to push your business forward and help you build a community of creatives and of clients that are just raving about you. So if you have any questions, feel free to email me or post a blog comment and I am happy to help you with how I handbook. Have a great day.